12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. In the city of dreams, everyone wants to be a star, but at what cost? 12-Sided Stories presents Otherworld Hollywood. Everybody and welcome to Other World Hollywood, episode number 10. My name is Wes Otis. This is our Call of Cthulhu actual play. I have some awesome people here. Let us start with Lev. Hi, I'm Lev. I use they, them pronouns. And today and every other day so far, I've played Roberta Robbie Cerillos, pronouns they, she. Hey, I'm Michelle Otis, and I am playing Belle Bellington, and we're both she, her. Hey y'all, I am Mac and I am playing Cass Richardson, aka Lenore Von Mori. Hello, hello, hello everyone. I'm Sam Starr. I use she, they, and the occasional fae pronouns. And tonight I am playing, well, tonight, today, whenever you're listening to this, I'll still be playing Amani DeVoe, who uses she, her pronouns. Hello everyone. My name is Candace, also known as Candace the Magnificent. My pronouns are they, she, and I am playing Evany Belafonte, pronouns she, her. Enjoying the show? Then take a moment to join our Patreon, support the podcast, and get early access to episodes and bonus content. Head to 12-Sided Stories Patreon today. All right, and this is a great place for a recap. In the last episode, Imane went home to find someone on a stretcher covered up by a sheet and pretty much told that one of her neighbors died. She then went upstairs to find Rose, the love of her life, waiting for her, told her that she got a job at a hardware store. And then a phone call came in. It was Amber from Lenny saying that Trish had not shown up for her shift yet and that if she sees her, please call the restaurant. Nothing wrong there. Next was Miss Belafonte, who went home to find servants and a clean house, and a walked dog, and food, and an agent, and new clothing, all given to her by her new friends at New Day Cosmetics. She had a wonderful time, squealed many times, did little dances, glided across waxed floors. It was a wonderful time. Then we go over to Lenore, who talked with Henri about the trouble with Belle, which should be a movie, and decided to reach out to Tony Stanelli, Belle's ex-husband, to see if he could do anything about it. Engaging the mob is always a good way to go. He said, sure, I'll talk with my ex-wife. And then we jump over to Belle, who was asleep, and then suddenly heard somebody in her kitchen making coffee. And it was said ex-husband Tony, and they had a wonderful conversation, really adult conversation with each other. A lot of respect, a lot of love, even though they're not together anymore, a lot of generosity. And they said wonderful things about how he's going to help her out with a story that's going to put to bed the whole Henri is kissing boys at studios kind of thing. That's where that left off. And then Robbie had a very interesting conversation with Easter. By bonking heads with the cat, the cat was able to send its thoughts into hers and basically told her, stay away from the door, stay away from the books, go eat your dinner and go to bed. And Robbie did it. Just saying. That's my interpretation of the whole thing. And then Robbie fell asleep and they woke up hearing sounds and they got their cane because they're not wearing their braces. And they went out and tried to sneak out and did not do well. And at the end of the hallway was a tall woman with long linens on that were basically see-through, dark black skin, and a cat head. And Easter sitting next to this woman on the floor. And that's where we had ended that episode. I think that we should pick up there. You are standing at the end of the hallway. This person slash cat person says, is this one of your servants? Easter. And he goes, yes, ma'am, I'm I'm sorry. She obviously can walk in dreams and I didn't know that. Hold on. You can speak out loud? 
Oh, wait, no. You said this was a dream. I understand now. I'm with it. Thank you for your patience. Is there a reason why she hasn't got it on the floor yet? Well, that's kind of... It's it's hard to get up off the floor, honestly. Um, why would I be on the floor? I'm sorry. Also, who are you? Why are you in this house? That's the more important one, actually. Sorry. She starts to walk towards you in these long, purposeful steps. And she gets right up next to you. And she puts her hand under your chin. And she goes... I am Basset. I am a god. I know what that is. I know I... Oh, you're... Did you just say that? No, I... The name... The name as of that, I... And I didn't, like... It felt weird to say, like, oh, I know who you are because I've never met you before. So I, like, the concept of you as a goddess, I am oh, I am familiar with, but not you as a singular per. You're very pretty. That's really what's happening here. Well, I appreciate... The words that seem to spew out of your mouth very quickly. That's a common thread with me, yes. Hi. All right. Why are you here in my dreams? So I'm talking with the general. The general? What's he general of? The cats. All... Easter, you're general of all the cats everywhere? Well, of the sections, I... uh, There's a lot of cats. There's a lot of generals. Oh, I understand. Like the Los Angeles general cat. The cat general of Los Angeles? More of the dreamlands. You're in the dreamlands right now. Right, right, right. Not Los Angeles. It's dreamly. I understand now. I don't understand, actually. I'm really confused about everything that's happening, but this is a dream. So, like, really, I don't think I'm supposed to understand it. I think, though, that your brain has caught up with the fact that you're standing next to a goddess and you need to make a resolve check. Oh, fuck. (laughs) All right. Hold, please, while I find where that is on my sheet. (laughs) All right. Let's see. You failed last time. Let's try this one. And I don't have any cat dice right now. Which is a travesty. That's cocked. That's also cocked. Why are we... Okay. 54 under my 70, so we're good. Okay. I think Robbie... It's not even that they don't believe that she's a god. I think Robbie fully believes that she's a god, but has always kind of been like, why are you better than me? What's what's the deal? Like, why are you better than me? So Robbie hasn't really thought about, like, <laughs> prostrating themselves on the ground or, or giving any kind of harumph to it because they're like, I've never really understood any of the, any gods of any pantheon. I've never understood it. So I'm just going to talk to you like you're a person, <laughs> which it may come to ill effect, but... That's how they're that's how they're going. <laughs> well, now that we're introduced, you seem to be able to speak with people in their dreams. Have you had any weird dreams lately? So many. So many. Where to start? Okay, well there was the one where I was just in a brawl. People were just fighting and pissed off. And then there was a man in a hat when I woke up. This is when I woke up. There was a man in a hat and he knocked on the door and he said, it's not good to be having other people's dreams. And I don't know how he knew that I was having dreams for one and two, that they weren't mine. That's insane. And then I had another one. I think I fainted. I'm not really understanding how I had this one, but I think I fainted. But I, it seemed like I just turned around in my bathroom and I was on an island. And there was a spear going to the sky and it just had people skewered on it. Full, and they were alive too. They were screaming. And then there was this figure in a robe that was not actually a robe. It was just a bunch of skin. I've never experienced a dream like that. And then it scared me. And then I woke up in a woman's arms. Yeah. Well, at least the last part was decent. Now, I noticed that you're using a cane is it would be difficult for you to make it to the dining room so we can have a conversation. Oh, I, I, I can walk to the dining room. I have my cane. I If I had my braces on, I wouldn't need the cane, but I don't have my braces on, so I need the cane. So we're... I, I understand. I understand. Uh, come with me. Yes, yes, yes. I'll pick up Easter. <laughs> he looks at you. Watch your tongue. Be careful. I've been told that my entire life, and I've never been able to do it. I promise I'll do my best. Also, you're a general. Congratulations. Thank you. Kind of looks away. (laughs) Like, all right. Well, you sit down and Easter sits on the table and Asset looks at you. And you're having this weird thing because she has this beautiful large cat head. So it's it's just kind of weird because you keep flipping through like human animal human animal kind of thing and she goes the reason the man knew that you were dreaming about the things that you were dreaming about was because you were in his dream what yeah how you seem to have the ability to 
enter people's dreams. It happens. People are dreamers. They can enter the dreamlands just by going to sleep. Most people, they come here every night and they have their own individual dream, not realizing there's a whole world outside that exists. Unfortunately, you've landed in a very dangerous dream. Whose dream is it then, if it's not mine? The Red Horseman. The Red ho- like Like the four horsemen? I don't remember what color those were, but though that was the thing, right? War. That would make sense. Red and war do seem to go together. Yeah. Who is, 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 is the hat dude? Yes. No way. Can I get a resolve check? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this is the first time Robbie's failed a resolve roll by six <laughs> points. I could, I could push it with luck, but I think, I think it's their time to lose their mind. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how many points you're going to take. Then we're going to figure out what your reaction is. Yeah. You take six points. Six points. Woof. You need to roll against your intelligence. You want to fail this roll. I, I want to fail this roll. Good thing my intelligence is an 80. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't say it was going to be easy. No. Ha! No, I got a 30. All right. Now, everything falls into place. Not only are there Egyptian gods, but there is mythical creatures from Christian myth and everything else that seem to be walking around And you have been in contact with them and they have been talking to you somehow. And they work at Cut'em Films, which is also weird. So I am now going to roll to see how you respond and then you can role play that accordingly. Beautiful. You got a four, which is fight. Yeah, I kind of expected it to be that. (laughs) Roro. Robbie, upon hearing that all of these mythological creatures are real thing which to be fair they've always half believed anyway right you established that early so yeah yeah that's kind of been a thing that they've just kind of taken as fact Mm -hmm. i think what what's kind of throwing them toward fight more is the fact that there is an interaction that's been consistently weird and strange and this is the first person who's actually explained it to them so robbie kind of gets up with their cane and slams it on the table what am i what am i supposed to do with this information now what who why i have so many questions and no one's answered them in any kind of a clear way you were the closest person to anyone who's answered anything to me and now i'm just supposed to what do i do with with war with war i'm war he's war and just kind of just gets stuck on war and doesn't know how to move off of that one word. So as you're yelling war, 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 at some point you pick up your cane and you swing it because you're so angry. And she puts her hand up and you freeze. And then she lifts you in the air about a foot. And she gets up from the table and walks over and she starts gently stroking your hand. And she goes... This is what he does. He wants you to fight. He wants everybody to fight. He enters your bloodstream and makes it rage. So I need you to calm down because I really don't want to have to kill you. Do you understand? Yes. I'm going to put you down. I didn't I didn't want to hit you. I I know. That's why you're still alive. Thanks. Not to be rude, but I kind of forget you're a goddess. Not that be you aren't kind of exuding power everywhere. You're just Besides the cat thing, you seem pretty normal. Mm. Well, you'll remember. It'll come to you. Oh, I will. She puts you down on the chair and says, Were there other people in your dream? Um, Friends, colleagues, anybody? I don't have a ton of friends, if I'm being completely honest. But there was people I work with. There was a lot of people I work with. I, the one I remember the most clearly is Miss Von Mori, Lenore. She was just like beating up. This gossip columnist, Belle, it was like blood and like viscera and like nail. There was like skin under it. It was, it was kind of brutal. Well, you have a hard task in front of you because you need to talk with them. You need to talk with anybody who was in that dream. Because War has one thing that he wants to accomplish. Can you guess what it is? War? Correct. Okay. I got that one. I understand that. What am I supposed to do for them? Just be like, hey... Don't fight. Well, maybe more eloquently, but yes. I'm sorry, Miss Bostet. I don't know if you've picked up on this. Elegant words out loud aren't really my bailiwick. 
She is still standing next to you, and she takes her long finger with a very nice manicured claw on the end of it and just takes it down your chin just a little bit and goes, Dear, I believe that you'll be able to do whatever needs to be done to help people. Correct? Uh Uh-huh. Great. Now, it's been fun meeting you, and we will speak again, but I must go now. At some point, I'm going to have so many questions about ancient Egypt. There's more of us in this city, so be careful. Of of who? Of whom? My sister is here as well. Which, Which sister? Just look out for a lioness head. Oh, that sister. Stay away from her. Got it. Good. General, I'll talk to you later. Keep your servant in line. Make sure she stays out of places she's not supposed to go. Robbie, be a good servant. Okay. Okay. You want your heart to be weighed in the right way, correct? Right. Yes, that... Wait, that's real too? (laughs) It's all real, sweetie. And then she just fades away and you wake up in your bed. It's morning. Robbie gets up and immediately starts writing everything down. Okay. And also a few very confused and <laughs> horny thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Some sauciness in there. Okay. Just a little bit of spice. Being like, and then she like lifted my chin and I've never felt this way before. It doesn't matter right now though. <laughs> Oh, uh, all right. Let us jump over to Sam. So, Imani, you've talked with her. She's like, oh, it's just oil. No big deal. And she is being really affectionate. I mean, she's usually affectionate with you, but she's, you know, playing with your hair and kissing you a little bit and while you're listening to the radio. She goes, this reminds me so much of when we were back home. And I'm so glad that it all worked out so well. Same here. Same here. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I have a lot on my mind tonight. I might retire a little early. That's okay. Are you sure? I was hoping maybe we could uh, have sex. Okay. You're the best. I know. I'll go get the accoutrement. Meet me in there. Strip. <laughs> <laughs> so later that night after the festivities, you fall asleep in your bed. You're in this department store and there's this mannequin in front of you. And it's Trish, and there's a pool of blood underneath her where she has leaked out onto the floor, and a steel bar going through her body, keeping her aloft. Oh, this is real bad. And then behind you, Rose comes up and says, Oh, do you like that dress? I love that dress. I bet it would look better on you than on that mannequin. Do you not see the... And she just gestures to the blood. All I see is my love for you, darling. Can you give me a resolve check? Uh Uh-huh. Let me see where this... I like playing Rose. (laughs) This is fucking horrifying, I have to say. Just for clarification, so is Imani dreaming this or she walks in... Dreaming. Okay. It's your power. It's whatever your power is. Okay. Okay, okay. Oh, and by the way, Lev, all of those points you lost are permanent because it was with a goddess that you had all of that stuff. So So I was at 70 and I'm at 64. Correct. Your max is lower. That's a hot four. You got a four? Yeah. Wait, it's the double zeros and a four. That's four. Okay. Yeah, and my power is 70. So you're fine. She turns your head towards her and kisses you deeply and starts to take you to the ground. In the store? In the store. And suddenly you find yourself rolling around on the floor, but it's really tacky. Like there's, you feel a lot of this blood start to get on you as she's just kissing you. And you're trying to push away from her a little bit because you're freaking out about the blood. And she goes, everything's going to be fine. It's all for you, Imani. It's all for you. What did you do, Rose? And you wake up, and Rose is standing at the end of the bed, watching you sleep. Oh, honey, you're awake. Do you always do that? What? Sit at the edge of the bed and watch me sleep. You are very pretty. I'm going to go get in the shower. Um, and <laughs> and Monty will literally practically jump out of the bed and scuffle <laughs> to the shower, locking the door. You lock the door... And you look at your hands, and they're covered in blood. 
What in the hell? Are you okay, honey? She knocks on the door. Fine. Um, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, just caught a bit of a dizzy spell. No worries. So you get washed up and probably head to cut them as quickly as possible would be my guess. Unless there's something else you want to do. Hell no. <laughs> okay. Get to work as quickly as possible. Okay, cool. Lenore, you find yourself on a throne made out of carved ravens. There's a camera in front of you. There are all of these people around, and you are in the middle of a broadcast for national television for your midnight show. And you see Belle in the background, and she's laughing, and every once in a while looking at you. And you look down, and you notice that there's a gun in your hand, and everyone just stops for a minute. And Belle keeps talking, though, boring away into your brain. Do you fight the urge to shoot her? I do. But it's, it's definitely like that real hard grip on the gun where it's like my hands are shaking a little bit holding it. Let's make a power roll. This isn't a resolve check, but it's just against your power. Okay. Ooh, I got a 53 over my 50. Okay. You walk through and you put the gun up to Belle's head. And you fire. Belle keeps talking after you blow the top of her skull off. She just continues to talk to you. Can you make a resolve check for me? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) 57 over my 50. You wake up screaming in your own bed. Let me see how many points you take. Okay. You take four points. Just so you all know, if you take five points or more, that's when we do the test to see if you understand what's going on. Anything below five points is just a knock. So you wake up, you're screaming, you're covered in sweat, and in your hand is a gun, and it smells like it's been fired. I drop it immediately. Henri comes out of the bathroom, goes, what's, is that a gun? I, I don't know where, how, and I shot her, and then I didn't, but I don't, Who'd you, who'd you shoot? I don't know. We got to get rid of the gun. Oh, uh, I, but maybe I didn't. I don't, I don't know. Sweetie, sweetie, it's okay. It's okay. Let's go in the restroom. Uh, just go in the restroom. I'll, I'll handle the gun. Okay. We'll get rid of it. Uh, oh. I'm sure, I'm sure there's an explanation, but right now I'm sure the neighbors heard that you scream and we need to get you out the door so that they know you're okay. 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 okay but I'm, but I'm not okay. Yeah, I know. I know, sweetie. We got, but we we gotta we gotta pull it together, okay? We can't we can't have any more issues, and we can't have the police cover. I know. I know. Okay. I'm okay. Breathe. 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 Yeah. The gun will be gone when you come out. Okay. 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 All right. And she's almost like on autopilot at this point. Okay. So you go in. You put on your clothes. When you come back out, Henri has made the gun disappear. And he says, I'll drive you to work because you need to show up at work, okay? And we'll handle this after you're done. Just try your best to, I don't know, just try your best, okay? And I'll call you later. Okay, thank you. I, I, I really don't know what happened. I don't know either. And you were in the bed the entire time, so I don't know where you got a gun from, but we'll get rid of it. I, I don't either. I was I was dreaming, and then it and then it was there. Yeah, that's weird. All right, let's go. Okay. So you walk out to the car. You go to cut him films. We'll be back to you in a moment. All right, Belle, you wake up and you've got blood all over your nose, all the way down onto your nightgown, and your head feels like it's been split open. Uh, um, uh, oh my God! What what happened? What? And if I can get up. I go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. You've got blood coming out of your nose, out of your ocular cavities, out of your ears. Blood is coming out of every orifice on your face, streaming down onto your nightgown. Um, Oh my God. Can you make a resolve check for me, please? Of course I can. (laughs) I rolled a one. Wow. Whoa. You are a stone cold bitch. All right. (laughs) Also in the game. Yeah. (laughs) So what do you want to do? You are in complete control. I want to check other parts of my body. Everything else is fine. But for some reason, you've had this mass 
bleeding of the face. There's no hole in your head or anything like that, but you do feel like someone has put an ax into your forehead. You have a huge migraine right now. Uh, okay. And I call my doctor who, of course, in this time period makes house calls. <laughs> and I ask him to come over right away. All right, I'll, I'll be over. So he comes over, knocks on the door, comes on in, says, okay, do you wash up before he comes over? No, I want him to see. Dear God. Yeah, this is this is how I woke up. I, I'm still a little fuzzy. I don't know what happened. He starts taking out instruments out of his bag. So he goes, uh, all right. I mean, unless you had some kind of aneurysm and got lucky and all this blood came out, that's the only thing I can think of. I, I'm going to suggest that we take you in, observe you for maybe a day or two, make sure everything is okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me get cleaned up before I walk outside like this. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> please, dear God. No one needs to see that. Yeah, so I, I say, help yourself to, there's coffee in the kitchen, you know, and um, I go and I clean myself up. All right. You guys head over to the hospital and they start running tests on you. And during all these tests, Johnny shows up with another vanilla envelope. He says, hey, I hard to track you down. You feeling okay? Uh, no, actually. I, I woke up and I, I was bleeding everywhere. Well, that's no good. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> I would be too. So I got some more pictures, not of Amane, but of her roommate. Really? Yeah, I don't know what to make of these. Well, we're waiting for the results. Let's take a look. He pulls out this picture and it's several pictures of a woman taking different strange packages wrapped up in plastic and putting them in the back of her car. Johnny, did you follow the car? Please tell me you followed the car. Of course I followed the car. She went to the pits. Of course she did. Oh my God, Johnny. Yeah, I don't know who was in the bag, but uh, it was definitely her roommate that did it. Well, I mean, things in the pits don't sink fast. Thinking cops? Yeah, we might have to get them involved on this one. Yeah, I guess this is too salacious. After they come out and say what happened, we can post it. I've got doubles of all these pictures. Okay. Okay. I think that's fair. Do you mind taking care of it? Because, uh... Well, yeah, of course. I still got to find out what's going on here. You know, might be my brain, but at least it ain't my ticker. True. True. All right. Well, look, I'll, uh, I'll talk to you in a bit. I'm going to go turn these pictures into the police. All right. All right. Thanks, Johnny. All right. So Johnny leaves. Let us jump over to Belafonte. You are asleep. You are walking through the longest walking closet ever. There is a gold floor beneath your feet. You have on beautiful lingerie as you swoop down this never ending hall of beautiful clothing with Buttercup running along right next to you as you look at all of your stuff. And finally the hallway ends and you see this large, looks like a Tommy gun sitting on the floor. And at the end of the barrel, it says fame. And you turn around and Imani is standing with her back towards you. I don't think she does anything. I think she looks at it and it's like, I'm already famous. Okay. You wake up and you're like, that was weird. And you hear a knock on your door and it's William. And he goes, ma'am, I'm getting breakfast ready for you. Call time is soon. So is there anything me or the footmen or the maids can do to make things easier for you? Hmm. I don't think so, William. Uh, just make sure that everything's in order for me to eat and get on my way. Uh, I'll need a ride to the studio. I don't think I should be driving myself anymore. No, of course, your chauffeur is waiting for you downstairs already. Thank you. Maybe a little picnic basket in case I could peckish on set. Of course, ma'am. You walk into your bathroom to start your routine. And in the bathtub is the Tommy gun. And it says fame at the end of it. I said I'm already famous. Are you famous enough? A voice comes from behind you. Well, I should say so. I have everything I need. And she turns around slowly. Standing right next to you is the man that barely speaks. You see how wonderful I am in our production. He puts his hands on your upper arm and says, you are magnificent. But you have to fight for everything you want. You know that. 
That I do. Sometimes you fight with your fists, and sometimes, darling, as you know, you must fight with your mind. How about kissing with your lips? Well, (laughs) that doesn't sound like much of a struggle, now does it? And he takes you in a firm embrace and kisses you. You come out an hour late from your room. William has waited for you slowly. When you turn around, the man that you were just with is gone. You don't see him. You get your picnic basket and you head out to the car and the chauffeur opens the door and you are radiant. And as you're driving away, you see the same woman that you saw at the New Day Cosmetic Mansion standing across the street, the black tall woman watching you go down and drive away. All of you but Belle are now at Cutem Films. Robbie seems to be very anxious Evie seems very relaxed. When you walk in, Evie, you notice the man in red kind of standing there, and he tips his hat to you, just gives a side smile as you walk in. Ebony, like, flounces her hair in his direction and gives, like, a little wink over her shoulder, trying to hide it from the others so that they don't think. Everyone but Belle is in the room together and just kind of sitting on the stage. Does anyone want to bring up anything that happened the night before? Or is everybody keeping their mouth shut? I think as soon as Robbie sees everyone is there. Oh, hi. Yes. All of the actors are here. Incredible. Can I speak to you all? And they'll raise their voice about a script thing, a thing in the script that I wrote that I would like to talk to you about over here. Uh I mean, um, why are you shouting? I just want to make sure everyone knows it's about the script. Oh, oh, what? Come over here. We can talk about it out of the way of everyone. Robbie, darling, it's very early for this kind of behavior. Oh, sorry. I lean over to Ebony and, and I'm just like, are all writers like this? Like, is that how they announce script changes? I mean, they each want a little bit of a flourish. That's what happens when you work behind the scenes. You need to steal the spotlight any way you can. Wow, I guess everyone's trying to make it out here, I guess. City of dreams and all of that. You pull everybody over to the side and you can feel the eyes upon you. Okay, here's the thing. This isn't actually about the script. Um, that was a ruse. Shocking. I I think a lot of people who are normal are going to have a hard time understanding this, but oh well. I had a dream last night that Bastet, the Egyptian goddess, came to me and said that we are fighting the horsemen of war and that we shouldn't do violent things. Ooh, who's dreaming of doing anything violent? Bastet. Although, now that you mention it, I did find a Tommy gun in my dreams last night and... In my bathroom today, it vanished um, after some extracurricular activities. But before that, um, I did remember seeing a gun. So maybe don't use it? No! Okay, here's the thing. This is... I'm just going to say all these things to you guys, and I'm not going to try and beat around the bush, because it's the truth, and I, if you believe it or if you don't, I really don't um, know what that's going to do. I'm realizing that I might be sent away if you don't believe me, but also... Oh, well... Um, so the man with the red hat, the man, the man with the red hat, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yes, we know who you're talking about. Evany is silent. He's the horseman of war, apparently, the red horseman. Um, and oh, also, I can kind of like walk through dreams, apparently. Um, I, I'm sorry, is this, is this some sort of like acting exercise you're trying to get something out of us? No, I said this wasn't. Because I, I'm really, I can't today. There's just... I, I know this all sounds weird and insane and impossible. You beat up Belle Bellington in a dream, didn't you? How did you know that? Because I saw it. And it wasn't your dream. It was the his dream. You guys beat each other bloody. Uh, so I was having someone else's dream and they dreamed of me beating up Belle Bellington? He, wait, are you gifted? I, I didn't think I was, but I, I guess I kind of am. It's all very new to me. The cat I'm taking care of told me. You know, my grandmother spoke of it was what I thought was just old wives' tales that elders would tell children. Just of days past and folklore and fairy tales. But she spoke of dream walkers, people who had a certain sight and could view in on the dreams of others as though 
it was happening to them. Typically, they kind of look more like me. No offense, but... That's fair. Wait, 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 wait. You said, um, you spoke to a cat and that Bastet, the goddess, was with you. That's what you're saying. Well, so I talked to the cat. I talked to the cat before I went to bed. And then I went to bed. And then Bastet was like, hey, hello, hi. And what did she look like? She was so pretty. She was so pretty. My God. I've never seen someone that pretty. No offense. But she also had a, a cat head. Ebony kind of like looks off in the distance a little bit, realizing that they definitely have seen not the same thing, but something that sounds familiar to that at the New Day clinic. You're saying you could speak to a cat. Could you talk to Buttercup? Isn't that a dog? Is is Buttercup a general of the dreamland? I don't know. I mean, uh, really, I, I according to what you're saying. I mean, I could try. Mm. If, if you really want me to, but but she's a she's she's a dog, right? Yes, she is. I've only had experience with cats so far. Also, she said to stay away from her sister. Um, oh, Sekhmet, I think the li- the one with the lion head. She said. Oh, but she's lovely. She's lovely. I'm sure no one would have told you that. I, I I'm just quite. Lenore, why do you look like that? I'd have thought of all of us that your spookiness would lean right into this. They're movies. No, no, no. It, it's 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 real. It's it's very real. <gasps> so there are ties to religion. I don't. All I know from my family growing up is nothing but ancient Egyptian stories and fairy tales that have been passed on through generations down to us. These are not just movies, but historical figures and beliefs. I mean, I have a background in this, yes, but it's all its all been academic. It's always been academic. That's where it starts. And where it stops. Academia is all that we have left. There's no time machine. We can't go back in time and see and talk to these deities themselves. Academia is what we have. Yes, quite right. You can't go talking to gods. <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> but I did. But but I but I did. And she's, she's... It was probably just like a manifestation and you were in the dream. Did she touch you? Did she touch you, Robbie? Was it exhilarating? Was it phenomenal? Could you write home about it? Um... It was an experience that I've never had before. It was kind of like your stomach kind of goes away. And also the back of your neck gets really, really, really hot. And your legs kind of tremble a little bit. I've never had that experience before. It was the first time I felt like that. And it was kind of exhilarating. And I, Darling, you sound like you were aroused. Is that what that feels like? Wow. Suddenly from across the studio here, what the fuck is going on? Righteous meeting, please. Leave us in peace. Danny goes, look, we don't have all day, people. We've got to get this thing going. I'm so sorry. I just have two more line notes to give. Jacques Couture says, Jesus Christ, we're never going to get this done. All right, fine. Two more minutes and then we start filming. Okay, I know. I know it seems insane and unlikely and kind of every other impossible word that there is. But but maybe I can take you with me. Maybe I can like take you to the dreams with me and you can meet her. Let's let's say all of this is possible. Sure. I would say we table this for now and maybe discuss when we're not at the studio. Of course. I agree. Well, I'm I'm staying at um at Penelope's house right now because my apartment got um flooded by weird things. I don't understand. I'll talk about that later too if you want to hear about it. It's really interesting. We should also talk to Miss Bellington because she's 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 uh, words. God. <sighs> She is part of this too. Uh, do, do we have to? Well, you were beating her up in your dream that I saw. That had to be so exhilarating. All the more reason to leave her out of it. I mean, you said no violence. Belle Bellington brings violence within her wake everywhere she goes. Well, we need to warn her not to bring violence then. If we're trying not to, like, have war. War. And Robbie's, like, waving their arms. Do an idea roll for me, Mac. That's just your intelligence. Roll against your intelligence. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I got a 49 under my 70. The thing that pops in your brain as Robbie is saying war is mob war. 
when you start thinking about Belle? If we have to involve her, then we are going to set some boundaries with her because she could take all of us down with a sweep of her pen if we come to her with this kind of story and she does not believe us. And she would gladly do it. I understand. Um, someone besides me should probably talk to her then. I vote not me. I don't think it should be you either because you've had violence with her. Um, I honestly don't know how to invite her up to someone else's house, but I'll do it. But I'll just say, hey, come here if we need me to. Where is she anyway? She's been skulking around a lot and she's not here. Maybe violence already got her. Oh, don't say that. I think that's a really bad thing if violence got her already. I think Bossette will be really sad. Not sad. I don't think she'll be sad, actually. I think she'll just be really frustrated. Okay, good meeting. Well done, everyone. We'll... Let's... Shoot. (laughs) All right. (laughs) And we switch back over to the hospital where Belle is. And she's half asleep. And they've had to do a blood transfusion because uh, she lost a lot of blood. And a woman comes in to your room and she walks over to the bed she goes it's not nice having people follow you it's quite disconcerting i don't appreciate it and in the future i would leave imani alone because if you don't i'll make sure that the next place that you're in a bed is the morgue and she drops a severed hand on your bed with you and walks out the door and that's where we're gonna stop this episode Ooh. You don't get to fucking do that. Listen, <laughs> like, listen, no, I'm putting my foot down today. <laughs> God damn it. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh. That was a great episode. Thank you, everybody. Oh. That was pretty awesome. Sam, you got some issues. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you got subscriptions. All right. So I'm real worried for my girl. <laughs> All right. So thank you all so much for playing. Let's find out where all of these wonderful people are. Let's start with Candace. Hello, everyone. I have been Candace the Magnificent. You can find me at that Candace girl on Twitter, at Candace Marie on Blue Sky, at Candace the Magnificent everywhere else. And every other Saturday, you can see me over on Matihi's channel in What We Do in the Shallows, an original 5e homebrew pirate campaign. Hey y'all, I have been and will continue to be Mac Beauvais. You can find me everywhere online as at Strange Like That and uh, maybe offline in some places as Strange Like That, like dark alleyways and morgues. I am Sam, Sam Star. Uh, you can find me all over the internet at Lust for Life X. L-U-S-T-T-F-O-R-L-I-F-E-E-X. Uh, you can see me most commonly on Saturdays on Transplanners Twitch channel, uh, playing Lumira, getting into just a bunch of multiverse fuckery. It's gay, it's dramatic, it's sad, and it's a good time for all. So you can see me there. And if you follow me on the interwebs, that name across pretty much everything, you can find me there and you can see my shit. Hell yeah. Hi, I'm Lev. You can find me on Twitter at LegoM2, the number 2 RS, or Blue Sky on Instagram at Lev.RS23. If you want to see me play more silly games, uh, check me out at Mayday Roleplay. We play Orpheus, where we're a bunch of sad gay ghosts. Delta Green, where we're a bunch of sad gay secret agents. Who will someday be sad gay ghost? We it's soon. It's it, the end is imminent for several of us. It's a surprise that many of us have lasted three seasons. Yeah, and uh, I pop over to to Crossroads Gaming sometimes, and you can also hear my voice in some video games. Hey, hey, I'm Michelle, and you can find me on the socials at Michulu. That's M I C H U L H U. You can find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the Plate Mail Games catalog through Battle Bards. And I am Wes Otis. Or as Sam likes to call me, motherfucker. <laughs> and you can find me at Plate Mail Games. Accurate. Accurate. Uh, you can find me at Plate Mail Games on all of the different socials. You can also find the show. It's uh, the number 12 Incited Stories on all the different socials. But if you really want to talk to us and talk about the show and everything, join us on Discord. The links are on our website, which is 12sidestories.com, all one word. And you will find a plethora of information there about us. If you want to help out the show, give us a shout out on your favorite platform, whatever social media you're on. 
or give us a uh, rating on your favorite podcast platform or join us on Patreon and get a bunch of extra stuff. We've got so many different things going on right now. Yes, we're only doing every other week for a show, but that is allowing us to do more for our Patreon supporters. So go check that out. Thank you so much for listening. And we will see you next time on Otherworld Hollywood. Bye. Bye.